Hello everyone. I wanted to do a follow-up video to what has proven to be my most popular video on YouTube, and that is audio preferences and how to set them up. I'm going to go much more advanced into the audio preferences setup this time. So if you're someone that used the first one for just basic audio preferences and now you're looking for something a little more detailed, well, this is where you go to do it. Um, some of you might um, be curious as to how I route the audio from these videos into um, these projects. And you might want to know that um, there's this tool on your Mac. If you hit your launch pad and you go in here and you type in audio MIDI setup, it's kind of an important thing to know. These are all your different um, available inputs and outputs for audio on your Mac. I currently have an Audient ID 14 set up and that Audient ID 14 um, is my preamp input. That's where my microphone is running right now. Um, I actually have my external headphones plugged in. Um, Zoom has established uh, an output. Um, this one, Soundflower, is my go-to for routing to this video. Um, I actually make sure to include Soundflower as one of my outputs on Logic, but I also want my headphones to be able to hear when I plug them into the computer. So if I want both Soundflower and my external headphones to be outputs, then I use this little plus button right here. When you hit the plus button, you can create a multi-output device. So when you do, it creates something that looks like this. Here, I can choose which one of those devices wind up being part of my multiple output device. So right now, my ed headphones are set up as an output so I can hear myself, and Soundflower is set up as an output so that my uh, video feed, it, Soundflower actually takes the sound off the audio card and feeds it back into the computer. So it's really cool, and the sample rate's set at 4,400. On the Audient ID 14, if I was doing a major project, I would get in here and set this sample rate up to um, 96 if I wanted really 96k if I wanted really high quality audio. But for what we're doing right now, four channel 24 bit is just fine at 44.1. So um, I'm gonna switch back to my multi output device. I hope that didn't change anything a moment ago, but I don't think it did. Um, multi output device. And that is how I set up my audio devices if I want to have two outputs. Now, I will say, be careful. If you're including your major hardware device, sometimes the introduction of multiple outputs can increase the latency factor. So test what you're hearing um, before you go try to record something big with multiple outputs. Do some tests. Make sure that the latency is not uh, increased too bad. Now we'll go back into Logic. That's the stuff that happens outside of Logic. Um, to get to your audio preferences, you go to Preferences and Logic Pro, click Preferences, Hover, Audio, click. Okay, now, uh, I would you may not see this many things. Um, before you do anything in Logic, I would come over here to the Advanced, Show Advanced Tools, Enable All. There's really not a reason in my mind not to have all of your advanced tools turned on all of the time. So then you can come back over to audio and yours should look like mine. Um, now, your output settings are, of course, where sound is going to go when it's leaving Logic. Um, you've got all sorts of things. If I wanted to go to the headphone setting on my Audient ID 14, I would click Audient ID 14, and that's where the audio would go only. But as I said, right now I'm using my multi-output device that I made in order for it to go to this video and go to my headphones. Um, my input source is my Audient ID 14. That is where uh, the sound signal is actually leaving this microphone and headed to. It's doing the analog to digital conversion. Um, input output buffer size. If you're recording something live um, and you can, you want to keep this number as low as possible. Now, that's going to tax your computer a lot more, but anything 256 and below, and you should have a pretty good. Um, low resulting latency. If you need it to be faster than that, you can reduce the sample size down to 32 if your hardware will handle it. 
once you're done recording all your stuff, you can increase that to 1024 to uh, improve the load on your PC um, or this chip in your computer. So it gives a, a longer ride through your computer because the buffer size is larger. However, it'll keep it from doing an audio overload a lot of times. Um, you can kind of mess with the recording delay, uh, if you want to by choosing number of samples and stuff, um, your threading options, you probably want to be automatic because that's talking about your processing cores and how they work. Um, and the multi-threading as well. Uh, summing is probably best left on high if you want the best quality audio and rewires a different story. Now, what if I want to get in and change the sample rate on my inputs. Well, for that, you need to go here to general. Nope. Sorry. Let's go back to devices. You want to go into recording and then recording project settings. And here under this audio is where you're going to get to pick what your sample rate is on your uh, audio input. So right now it's set to 44.1 K. Um, so that's 44,100 kilohertz of samples or 44,100 samples per second that is coming in uh, of analysis of the audio waves coming in. And then you can choose if you want to do surround sound formatting. Um, you can get all the way up to 7.1 surround sound or what choices you want to make there and pan law compensations. Um, you can get in and play with these settings as you want to. And there are different um, things that you can choose about your channel strips. But that is your general recording quality um, setting that you've got right there. So if you don't want them to be WAV files, you can record in as AIFF files or CAF files, depending on what kind of lossless format that you want. Uh, and you can choose to do 16-bit recording by taking off the 24. So uh, most of your audio input and output settings are going here. And then your choices of um, quality of input is going here with the number of samples that you've got. Now, finally, um, here are your input and output assignments. So if you want to go in and change uh, where your audio is outputting, for instance, sometimes in our computer lab, we use uh, Studio Live uh, 32. So there are 32 um, inputs and outputs that can be arranged. And we go in and pick here uh, which one of those that we actually want to be the return audio signal. Um, so if you're having difficulty finding where your uh, output source is, you might uh, come into this menu and input output assignments under the audio preferences to make sure that you're getting output to the right spot. And if you want to peg out different uh, inputs for surround input, you can go there. If you're setting up different uh, surround sound outputs and you have all the, the stuff that you need to be able to do that, like six different speakers, one of them being a subwoofer, here's where you can go in and assign exactly which output leads to what speaker. That's pretty detailed. So um, that's the advanced version of audio settings. Um, finally, when you add a track under audio, you can pick under the details, what input you want it to be um, as you build that audio track, or if you've already built one and you need to edit it, if you open your track inspector here, you can switch the input here to be a different input choice um, of your choosing. I only really have two built in um, the way that is. I can connect eight more if I want, but um, right now this is audio one is coming in on input number two. So again, to get to that, you can choose input and come down here. If you want to switch it to a stereo input, you can do that by clicking on this little circle, but you need to have two microphones plugged in to be able to do that. So that one is the left and one is the right. And I only have one, so I'm not going to do that and make things sound weird, but that's where you would do that. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below and I will try to answer them as best I can. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.